आई आई टी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन जैम क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी वन The amount of money that a gambler can win in a casino is determined by three independent rules of a six-faced fair die. So three independent rules. So die number one, die number two, die number three. There are three dice. Okay. The gambler wins eight hundred if he gets three sixes. Four hundred if he gets two sixes. One hundred in the event of getting only one six. So let's make the distribution of this gambler. ठीक है ये ग्रेट गैम्बलर का डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन बनाते हैं 800, 400, 100. हंड्रेड वन गैम्बलर डज नॉट विन और लूज एनी मनी इन ऑल दी अदर पॉसिबल आउटकम्स तो खाली यही तीन पॉसिबिलिटी है 800 हंड्रेड इफ ही गेट्स ऑल थ्री सिक्सेस दैट इज वन बाय सिक्स क्यूब एग्जैक्टली टू सिक्सेस दिस इज द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वन बाय सिक्स स्क्वेर मतलब है द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट द गैम्बलर विल गेट एटलीस्ट वन सिक्स एटलीस्ट वन सिक्स will ensure that the gambler will win at least rupees 100 so at least 1 6 is basically 1 minus probability of no 6 theek hai so 1 minus no 6 is pehle mein 6 nahi dusre mein 6 nahi teesre mein bhi 6 nahi theek hai so this is basically 1 minus 125 divided by 6 cube Two one six. So this will give me two one six minus one twenty five, which is basically ninety one. Ninety one by two one six is the answer. Find it up into the decimal and input it. This will be point four two one. Okay. अगर मैं इसको लिखूँ This is my answer. Clear? Eh? Give me a thumbs up if it's okay. Thank you. Now, next question is NAT question number forty-two. <laughs> Consider an economy where the full employment output is one trillion rupees. So, one trillion rupees. How many zeros? Okay, and the natural rate of unemployment is six percent. If the actual unemployment rate is eight percent, then according to Open's law, the absolute gap between the full employment and the actual output. So this is full employment output, right? This is full employment output. So if the unemployment is two percent, the cyclical unemployment is two percent. Oken's law states that for every two percent fall in GDP, for every two percent fall in GDP, unemployment will rise by one percent. Right. So that means if there is a two percent increase in unemployment, the fall in GDP must be four percent. so the, there will be a 4% fall in gdp so the out the difference between the out absolute gap between full employment and actual output will be 4% so we need to take out 4% of 1 trillion dollars so now and the and the answer needs to be in billion rupees so this is 1 billion so we basically need 4% of 1000 which is going to be 40 So this this is going to be the answer is going to be forty, which we have to input here. Okay, so that's going to be our entry. Okay, so you will just check that the answer of forty has been recorded.
IIT Jam 2021, question number 43. The values of a normalized indices of a country are as follows. The dimensions, value of the normalized index. So we need to basically find out following the UNDP methodology, the value of the human development index, which is HDI. We have taught you HDI in complete details. So what is the HDI? The HDI is basically the geometric mean of the life education and health okay so basically what we'll do is we'll take the weighted average of sorry the geometric mean of these three indices so this to the power one by three this one will basically give us 0 0.08 into 0 0.8 which is 0 0.064 to the power one by three basically becomes 0.4 that is my answer okay you can also think about it in this way that this is in geometric progression 0 0.2 0 0.4 and 0 0.8 so the geometric mean of 0 0.2 and 0 0.8 and 0 0.4 will be 0 0.4 okay any way you think about it it's fine this is my answer IIT Jam 2021, question number 44. The value of the integral, this is the integral. So I can write it down as this x minus 1 by root over x plus 1. It seems a bit difficult to see, but this form is x minus 1. Instantly, I should have an idea in my mind. Bulb should be running in your mind that you need to take a rationalization approach. Rationalization ke approach se jayenge. To ye aega. Root over x minus 1 divided by root over x minus 1. Bot simple sa rationalization hai. What I'll do is. X minus 1 is as it is. Root over x minus 1 divided by. This is of the format. A plus b into a minus b. So ye a, a square minus b square aajayega. This will cancel out. And this will basically give us integration of root over x. Root over x integration is x to the power half will become x to the power 3 by 2 divided by 3 by 2 minus x 0 to 9. Okay. Okay. So this will basically become 9 to the power 3 by 2 into 2 by 3 minus 9. Okay, so 9 to the power 3 by 27. 27 into 27 will be basically by 3, 9 and 18. 18 minus 9. Answer. Bus. As simple as this. Yeh answer hai. IIT Jam 2021. Question number 45. Put your answer in the chat box. Please do it. So, x0 is 2. x1 is basically 1 plus 1 by 1. x2 is basically 2 plus 1 by 2. x3 is basically, and this is basically 3 by 2 into x1 is 2 by 1. x3 is 4 by 3 into x2. Okay. So x2 is 3x0, x3 is 4x0, x100 will be 101x0, x50 will be 51x0, x100 minus x50, 101 minus 51. Answer, 100. 
IIT Jam 2021, question number 46. In a small open economy, the desired savings and the desired domestic investment are as follows, and RW is the world rate of interest. So SD and ID are given. The world rate of interest is 3%. So let's put in that value. So SD is equal to 10 plus 100 into 3 by 100. So this is going to be 13. And ID is going to be 15 minus 100 into 3 over 100. So this is going to be 12. What is the current account balance? If we all remember the equation, the current account balance is savings is equal to investment plus the current account balance. So this is 13, this is 12. So the current account balance is going to be equal to 1. Okay, so we will input the answer in 1 and that would be the right answer. IIT Jam 2021, question number 47. X1 follows a normal mu1 sigma1 square. X2 follows a normal mu2 sigma2 square. Mu1, mu2, sigma1 square, sigma2 square values are there. The correlation coefficient is 0.5. So if the correlation coefficient is 0 0.5, this is basically equal to covariance xy. Sorry, this is 1, 2, right? So uh, x1, x2 divided by sigma1 into sigma2. Okay? Sigma1 and sigma2 we know. 2 and 3, that is 6. So covariance divided by 6. So covariance ka value nikal gaya 3. Theke? Covariance x1, x2 ka value 0. 0.5 into 6, which is equal to 3. Variance of x1, x2, x1 plus x2, sorry, is basically variance x1 plus variance x2 plus 2 covariance x1, x2. So, 4 plus 9 plus 2 into 3, 13 plus 6, 13. majority of you have given me the answer as 19, very good. Jisne answer mujhe diya 14 ya 16, please note, aapne ye mistake kiya ki variance x1 plus variance x2 plus 2 correlation coefficient ko hi multiply kar diya 2 se. जो incorrect है आपको covariance से multiply करना है ठीक <coughs> है understood so answer है 19 question number 48 NAT a consumer always spends 50% of his monthly income on food so the total expenditure on food is 50% introduction of VAT on food items lead to a 20% increase in food prices so prices are increasing by 20% while his monthly income is not changed. So, and basically this implies that the total expenditure amount is unchanged. It is still 50%. So the consumer's price elasticity for uh, price elasticity of demand for food is now because the total expenditure is unchanged. That means when price has increased, the quantity has fallen such that the total expenditure is unchanged. This is always a sign of elasticity equal to 1. Now, what we have to be careful in writing is that this elasticity has to be, uh, this elasticity is actually negative, right? Because when price goes up, X comes down. So it's negative. So we have to actually input minus 1 and not just 1. That was the thing that we had to be careful about. You put in minus 1 and then you do save in next so that our answer gets recorded. Right here it got recorded. And now we move on to the next question. IIT Jam 2021, question number 49. This is a very, very simple question. This question is basically you instantly remind uh, quasi-linear utility function. Se. So this is a part of consumer behavior. If you take a look at my notes, quasi-linear utility function ke bare mein padhye, where I have written that one part of the utility function is a linear one and the other is a non-linear one. And the non-linear part of the utility function will have no income effect. Right? So instantly, your answer should be that price is unchanged. 
income increases this is the non linear good so x2 should not change instantly aapka ye jawab hona chahiye but chalo maine maan liya ki aapne quasi linear utility function ke bare mein aap bhul gaye no income effect ke bare mein bhi aap bhul gaye right to ek aur tarika hai ek aur kya tarika hai utility function budget line aap likh dijiye m is equal to एक्स पी एक्स प्लस वाई पी वाई अब ऑप्टिमल कैसे लिखते हैं हम लोग यहाँ पर पी वन पी टू है तो उसको थोड़ा सा एडिट करते हैं एक्स वन पी वन प्लस एक्स टू पी टू नाउ फॉर ऑप्टिमल वॉट आई डू इज आई कंपेयर दी एम आर एस ऑफ द यूटिलिटी टू द स्लोप ऑफ द बजट लाइन सो एम आर एस इज इक्वल टू पी वन बाई पी टू एम आर एस क्या है एम यू एक्स वन दैट्स वन डिवाइडेड बाय टू डिवाइडेड बाई टू रूट एक्स टू इज इक्वल टू पी वन बाई पी टू ओके सो रूट ऑफ एक्स टू इज इक्वल टू पी वन बाई पी टू रूट ऑफ एक्स टू इज इक्वल टू पी वन बाई पी टू आ गया अब यू कैन इजिली सी दैट एक्स टू अमाउंट इज बेसिकली पी वन स्क्वायर बाय पी टू स्क्वायर so x2 is only dependent on the prices yahan par diya hua hai prices remain unchanged khali income increase ho raha hai to x2 ka quantity kya change hoga nahi hoga even if you did not know ki income effect is equal to 0 to the non linear good aise nikal lijiye okay this is nat question number 50 The following data relates to a country's GDP in 12, 13, and local currency. Okay, so we we have GDP, private sector investment, investment expenditure by the government. So this is just I bar. This is investment expenditure by the government. It's part of G. This is exports. This is X. NFIA. Consumption expenditure by the government. So again, part of government expenditure. and private sector consumption so c okay and this is gdp at uh, this is g this should be gdp at mp nothing is given but that is never certain okay so what is the value of the country's imports so this is this is easy we just have to take out gdp at mp and we have to um subtract the other components from it so we'll take the value of gdp and from it we'll subtract consumption subtract investment uh so basically the formula is c plus i plus g plus x minus m so m is going to be equal to c plus i plus g plus x minus g d p so we will add all of these we will add uh c plus g plus g plus i plus x we will subtract this and we'll get the answer so we've already solved it and you would need a calculator for this calculator is going to be better and the answer comes out to 19895 okay so when you add c plus i plus g plus x you get 79711 and your gdp is 59816 so the net comes to 19895 and that is what we need to input the question was very simple but it is just some tedious calculations So let's input nineteen eight nine five one nine eight nine five, and again save and next, and we are done.